Hey guys, welcome to lesson 4.6, decimal multiplication. Our question for today is how can you use a model to multiply decimals? Again, we're using models. Models seem to be the best way for you to learn how to multiply with decimals. Um, but like I've said before, if this is not a strategy that you're like, yeah, this is super awesome. Let me use it every single time. If you're not feeling that, then you use what is best for you. Okay. Um, but when it asks you to use a specific model, we always need to make sure we follow those directions. So for number, the first part we're investigating, so you are gonna need a couple of color pencils. So grab you a couple of color pencils. I just grabbed what I had at my desk. I had these two. So just have them close by, that way you can um, use them in just a second. It says the distance from Charlene's house to her school is eight tenths mile. Charlene rides her bike seven tenths of the distance and walks the rest of the way. How far does Charlene ride her bike to school? You can use decimal square to multiply decimals. So what we're going to do is we're going to circle how far it takes from her house to school. So it's eight tenths mile. And then Charlene rides her bike seven tenths of the distance. So here's seven tenths of the distance. And her question is, how far does Charlene ride her bike to school? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a square with 10 equal columns. Because I don't know why they didn't do that for us because that was not Honestly, that wasn't smart of them, but we're going to make sure that we have 10 equal columns. So I'm going to start right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I'm going to go all the way across as well. So we're going to make our 100 frame. Make all the way to here. So there should be one, like a border of one square all the way around. All right, so there's our 10 frame. And then what decimal value does each column represent? So I'm going to actually do the columns themselves. So just like we've been doing with like our 10 sticks, each of these is going to be a 10 column. Sorry, I should have already done this and I didn't, but here we are. So it's going to look like that. So what decimal value does each column represent? And we've already talked about that. It's one-tenth. So each of these columns would be one-tenth of the whole. Now, use a color pencil to shade columns on the grid to represent the distance of Charlene's school. So we're going to, I'm going to do this one. It would be eight-tenths. So I'm going to shade eight of these ten that we've got going on right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. See, it didn't take me super long time. Just real quick, okay? Eight tenths. Now, we're going to ask us how many columns did we shade? We shaded eight columns because we know that that would be eight tenths. All right, now it says divide the square into 10 equal rows. So now we're going to divide it up into 10 equal rows. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, there's my 10 equal rows. All right, what value does each row represent? So each of these rows is going to represent 1 tenth. Now, it says, using a different color, shade the rows that overlap the shaded columns to represent the distance to school that Charlene rides her bike. So that means what we're going to do, we know it is 7 tenths, so we're going to go right here, and I'm going to shade 7 tenths. So here's 1 tenth of it, 2 tenths of it. You can barely see it because I should have got like a darker color. Four tenths. We're doing the the one part that's already shaded. Five tenths of the part shaded. Six tenths of the part shaded. And seven tenths of the part shaded. 
and shade it a little bit darker just that way we can see it a little bit better. I'm sorry I didn't get the right color. Okay, hopefully y'all can see that pretty well. Um, so we're shading seven tenths. Because remember, that's how much she rode her bike. Um, how many rows of the shaded column did we shade? We shaded one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven um, rows. I was supposed to say, what was the question? Sometimes I have to look back and see how am I labeling my question. All right, and then it says count the number of squares that you shaded twice. So we're not counting these because we only shaded them once. We would count all of these that we shaded twice. So it would be... We have seven times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know that seven times eight is going to give me 56, but it's not just like a solid 50, like a whole number 56, because there's each of these are hundredths. There are 56 squares, but I'm not just, like I said, I'm not just writing 56. Each of these squares is going to represent one hundredth. So if I have 56 one hundredths, it would be. 56 hundredths. So Charlene rides her bike for 56 hundredths mile. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next section. We're going to go ahead and skip down to the bottom where it says make connections. You can use decimal squares to multiply decimals greater than one. So this first one, we have three tenths times one and four tenths. So what we're going to do, shade columns to represent one and four tenths. So that means I would, so it says how many tenths are in one and four tenths. So that would be the same as 14 tenths. If I was looking at that, that means I would be shading one, let me do this. Yeah, I'll do this one. One hole, I'm going to do it really light. So hopefully we'll be able to see it a little bit better this time one hole, and then I'm going to have one, two, three, four. There's 14 tenths, or one and four tenths. So one hole and four tenths. Y'all can barely see that. I can barely see it, and I'm looking straight at it. One and four tenths. So hopefully you can see the difference between the two of them. Then it says shade rows that overlap the shaded columns to represent three tenths. So how many rows are shaded in the column? So now we're going to do three tenths of these part that's shaded. So I'm going to take my darker one and I'm going to go three tenths. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, so now, how many columns did we shade? Well, we shaded one, two, three rows. It should have been, how many? Oh, it is three rows. Three rows. We shaded three rows, because we did one, two, three, because we're looking at three tenths of the amount that was shaded. So now we have to count the amount that was shaded twice, not just the one, but the twice. So then we would look at it. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. So we wouldn't just write 42 because remember, these are not 42 pennies or 42 whole numbers. It's 42 hundred hundredths so I would say zero and forty two hundredths all right so we are going to look at a couple more together and then I'm going to let you roll out on your own um, one thing I am going to show you is how to multiply just like we nor like a normal multiplication of de decimals um, we're going to do a couple of more with mod one more with models this one 
And then I'm going to show you how to do it without the model because sometimes that's a little bit easier. But I do want you to know and be able to use the models when you see them because I know there are going to be models on iReady and I know there's going to be models on FSA. So I just want you to be prepared when you do see it. But most of the time, even like in real world, you're not going to have these models to be there for you. All right, so this one, what it, they had, they had four tenths shaded all the way and then eight of those tenths are going to be shaded so we have to see what is double shaded so these parts so we would have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirty forty fifty sixteen seventy eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three four twenty five six seventy eight twenty nine thirty thirty one thirty two remember not thirty two we would have thirty two hundredths now let me show you in the regular multiplication way if you want to do the coloring way, that is completely fine. I don't want to stop you from doing that. But like I said, you're not always going to have a model to color with. So this one, I'm going to have 0 and 7 tenths times 0 and 1 tenth. I know that 1 times 7 is 7. 0 times 1 is 0. 0, 0, 0. So I know I'm going to have 1 place behind the decimal and two places behind the decimal. So when I add this up, I'm going to have one, two places behind my decimal or where my decimal is moving. So I would have zero and seven hundredths. That way might be a little bit easier for you because we've already talked about moving your decimal. So let's do it with this one. I'm going to have 1 and 6 hundredths times 0 and 4 tenths. Or, sorry, this was 1 and 6 tenths, not 1 and 6 hundredths, sorry. So now I'm going to multiply. 4 times 6 is 24. Put down my 4, regroup my 2. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. Now I have 1, 2 places behind my decimal. So I'm going to move it 1, 2 places. So it's going to end up being right there. I can put a zero in front of it. So that would be 64 hundredths. Okay. Hopefully you've got it. Um, if you need extra hair, well, let, let's do one. Actually, let's do two more together because there's several that y'all are still going to be able to do on your own. So I'm going to set this one up. I have zero and three tenths, zero and four tenths. I'm going to multiply those numbers together. 4 times 3 is 12, put down my 2, regroup my 1, 4 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Now I've got 0, 0 times 3 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0, add it up, 2, 1, 0. I'm going to have 1 place behind the decimal, 2 places behind the decimal, so I'm going to move my decimal, 1, 2. So it's going to be in between the 0 and the 1. So I have 0, decimal, 1, 2. All right, last one together. Let's go ahead and set it up. 9 tenths times 6 tenths. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and see if you get the same answer that I do. Ta-da! Hopefully you have 54 hundredths. Okay, so on your own, I want you to do number 6, number 7, number 8, and number 9. Alright, once you are done with that, I want you to make sure you do your lesson check. And then I want you to, if you have questions, make sure you come on Google Meet so that I can help you with it. Have a great day, guys.